Hello there, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Ole Brygger, and if you're new here, I really hope I'll earn you a subscription today. A while ago, I made this Game Master built with dungeons and caverns, and I was so inspired by that project that I actually reached out to the Army Painter, who makes the Game Master collections. And they were so nice to send me this and this. I'm currently writing my own campaign for a D&D setup and I have a story about the tormented Frost King and this is a great opportunity to make some terrain for that campaign. So why don't we get started? This is the Snow and Tundra set. And there's no tools provided in this package, materials only. But that's good enough because I already have tools. And if you are totally beginner in this terrain building, I would definitely recommend you to get the Dungeons and Cavern core set because it has a lot of good beginner tools. And you can see my video up here. There's also a ton of foam, but let's see what's in this box. This is the Snow and Tundra terrain kit. So let's see what's inside the box. First, we have a how to build. This is a very good inspiration with tips and tricks. A thank you note. All the wall paints, the full range. Other Army Painter products, tools, tips, tricks. Very good stuff. And snow and tundra terrain kit. Congratulations on your new terrain kit. The restock options, that's very good to know. That could come in handy. I think I have most of it already. Okay, this is what's inside the box. Some uh, barbed wire. I don't know if I'm going to use this right now, but maybe I can use it for some miniatures modifications. With it. it looks like a chain or something, if I need something tiny. We have some sand and plenty of it, and we are going to use a lot of it. I still have some leftovers from the cavern, Dungeons and Caverns set. Poor frost tufts, that's gonna be useful. And some snow. I ordered some extra of this because I think I'm gonna need a lot of it. Then we have the colors, the tundra base, and the equivalent for this should be pure white. So I don't have to restock white for a while, but I think I'm gonna need a lot of this for this project. And we have the terrain primer. This is a water-based, so it won't melt your foam. And there's 300 milliliters, <laughs> quite heavy. And then we have the glacier turquoise. I don't think I have this color, but it should be uh, the Hydra Turquoise uh, equivalent. Ooh, the Tundra effects. I think the equivalent of this is the Fairy Dust. And this can make any color metallic. But I never tried to put it on top of white. And I think this will be a cool effect for some snow. And then we have the Ice Wash, which should be the equivalent to the Blue Tone. And the last we have the cryo wash, which should be the green tone or the military shader, I think is the same, and the subterrain wash from the dungeon and cavern core set. This is the total content of this package. There's no foam with it, so you will need to get one of these XPS scenery foam booster packs. And there's a lot of foam here, enough to make a full terrain. So let's start the build. First, I've selected three pieces Oh, the size of this is going to be pretty big. Uh, there will be three sections that I can put on the table. The first section here is uh, where the party will enter. And this is going to be some tundra and quite flat surfaces with some rocks and a lot of snow. The next one here, I will build some kind of hill up to a glacier and in the middle, we will have the entrance. And last, we have the entrance, the first part of the entrance to the cave. Then I will make some minor tiles, and then we will make a small tile for the tomb. But first, I will cut up a grip and roughen these plates up. And it was here I found out that the foam tiles were not square. I thought I could use the full width and length, but I had to trim it down and I lost almost an inch. So they ended up being 15 by 11. 
I even brought out my proxon but ended up cutting it by hand. And then I could start laying out the grit and roughen it up with some sandpaper. And instead of using curled up tinfoil, I started using a rock I found in the garden. I think this is a good opportunity to make some different kinds of surfaces. And the rock has at least six sides, so I can make some variations to it. To have an idea of where things were going to be, I marked up with a pencil where the entrance and the slope for the glacier should be. I wanted the slope to have a tiny curve, so I marked up a piece of foam and cut it out in a shape I liked. I also used my rock to give it some texture. I cut out some small pieces of foam so I could raise the terrain and I started to glue it in with PVA glue, but it was so fragile and unstable that I actually needed to bring out my hot glue gun. And I actually used the hot glue gun for most of the rest of the project. The advantage of using the hot glue gun is that if you put two pieces of foam together, you can cut through it with a hot wire. If you use PVA glue, you can't do that very easily because it's getting so hard. I cut out a piece of foam for the top of the glacier. And since it was so big, I decided to lay out a grid so it would easier the gameplay. Now I have built up the glacier and then I got the idea that I wanted a secret entrance with a ladder from the top of the glacier into the entrance of the cave. I covered up the size of the glacier so it would look more massive and I didn't need the space inside anyway. On the front side of the glacier, I used some of the cutoff I made in the beginning and now I needed a skull-like face for the Ice King entrance. I marked it up with a pencil and glued up some scrap foam pieces. I used my hot knife to cut out some teeth and then was ready to glue on. I also needed a crown which I cut out from some scrap foam. I used a lot of scrap foam for giving the structure some more mass and for all the decorations like stones, rocks and ice lumps. I did the same thing with the front part of the build and then I spread a lot of glue all over the place and spread it out with a brush so I could spread out some of the army painter sand. For the inside after the entrance I started to draw up some tunneling and then I cut it out. Decorated it with some rocks and ice cubes and ice clumps and put on some sand. Ah, a blank sheet of foam. Let's cut it up to make a tomb. I wanted to have some elevation in the tomb, so I thought maybe build a couple of stairs up to the sarcophagus. Then I got this crazy idea, that AI image I created earlier. Could I engrave that into foam? Yes, I could, and it was a success. Then I made some walls for the tomb and cut out a tiny piece of grit to make a bit more room for the entrance. I glued some pieces of foam together and tapped it with my hot wire to give it some texture. Now we have a sarcophagus. Shaking up some primer. This is the equivalent of the Gorgon hide. I actually found out that I have this in my war paint collection. Let's give all the parts a nice and even coat. The primer is now dry, so now I'll put the glacier turquoise. I'll thin it down with a bit of water just to make it flow a bit better into the cavities. As you will notice up here, I forgot to record it, I already put on some raven black to give it a more rock-like appearance. I'll try to put the turquoise into the deepest cavities. I'll put on the ice wash, that's a blue tone, and I will thin it down with some water so it runs easier into the cavities. I'll put it all over all the rubbles and stones I put on earlier. To make the road a bit dirtier, I used this light tone wash. It did not come with a snow and tundra set. It was something I had laying around like the Raven Black from the Army Painter. For the laser engraving, I used the blue tone and I actually needed a lot because that laser, it cuts deep. I thought it was still a bit too light. So to darken it up, I used this cold burst blue, which is a speed paint also from the Army Painter. I thought the turquoise blue was a bit too much. So to dull it down, I used the spray can provided with the Snow and Tundra set. And just a warning, don't do this inside without covering things up because spray paint is very messy. Go outside. For the Tundra base, I will put this on with a heavy dry brush. Then I went outside to my garden and found these weeds. I think they would look awesome for some tiny trees and I could put some snow and paint some white on them. 
Instead of painting on the glue for the battlefield snow, I mixed up some white PVA glue with water and put it in a spray bottle because this is a lot easier when you are putting that snow all over the place. I just spray it on, put on the snow and then I spray again afterwards to bind it together. At this point I also put in some tuft and spray glued again so the snow could stick on to the tiny tufts. For the tundra effects I decided to use my airbrush so I mixed it with some airbrush thinner and sprayed it all over the place. Remember, when you're spraying inside, make sure to cover things up because it's gonna get messy. I spent almost twice the time it took to paint to clean the things up. And now we just need a ladder. I went into Inkscape, designed the ladder and cut it out on my laser. I used some dark wood to paint it and now we are done. Yes, we are done. This project, it took me about three days, so it was a pretty quick thing. And I couldn't have done this without the army painter who sent me this snow and tundra set. Thank you so much for doing that. Let's see how this works in a playable scenario. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. And remember to like and subscribe if you think I deserve it. In the future, I won't be able to put up as many videos as frequently as I've done lately, but I will try to put up a video at least once a month. So see you around. Goodbye for now.